So we're obviously starting things off a little bit different this week. Is this week I am too angry to wait through the intro and the sponsor and all that shit. And like, look, I, so right up front, I get that for most of you, this is just the noise that you listen to on the way to work. And you don't want to hear about the how the sausage gets made drama that goes on behind the scenes. I get that, right? But for some people, this show is a community. It's an alternative to the religious communities that they left, the, the church groups that disfellowship them, the, the, the friend groups that shun them. And for some of us, it's even more than that. For some of us, it's a family. Instead of family reunions, we have live shows and conventions, but it's a family nonetheless. Hell, it's better than a family because we mostly really like each other. Well, last week, the news broke that somebody hurt my family. What's worse, what's, what's kept me up every night since is the fact that it's somebody I invited into the goddamn house. On Wednesday of last week, while Heath, Eli, and I were recording the last episode of this show, a story was released in Religion News Services that detailed multiple allegations of sexual misconduct by Andrew Torres of the Opening Arguments podcast. You'll know him from his frequent appearances on this show, as well as our sister shows, God Awful Movies and The Skeptocrat. Now, you might not be familiar with the site, but I can assure you that Religion News Services is a legitimate news source. It's one that I've used for years and years now. Now, since this story broke, as is so often the case, a number of new allegations have come forward. In the wake of all of this, we met with Andrew, who, in addition to being our lawyer and our friend, was also a minority owner of our company. He agreed that it was in the best interest of both the company and the community if he stepped aside and we severed all ties. We released a statement to that effect a few hours after the story broke. Now, to be clear, given the nature of the matter... There's a lot of shit I can't say. There are a lot of terms I can't use, a lot of journalistic best practices that I have to abide by. And I always hate shackling my tongue. But this is one of the instances where it physically hurts. You know, but maybe it's for the best. Maybe it's best that I have, to some degree, been deprived of my outrage here, right? Because let's face it, we always have outrage. Every fucking time. And where has that gotten us over and over again? Our community has put its trust in men and then seen that trust betrayed. And when it comes to light, we invariably respond with a sound and a fury signifying nothing. I owe you better than outrage. I brought someone into this community that did real harm to it. I owe you more than that. And I owe you more than I'm sorry and I'll do better, right? Because I am sorry and I will do better, but that's not enough. The walls of our community just came crashing down. And when that happens, you don't respond by just apologizing. You also respond by building better walls. So that's what we're trying to do. In the wake of these allegations, an organic effort arose in several online communities to create a new system of accountability. In retrospect, we realized that our thinking had been governed by a careless assumption that it couldn't happen here. We didn't even have a system in place where victims of sexual harassment could come forward, nor did we have a, an established set of procedures for what to do if somebody did. That means that if someone was victimized, the only person they could tell about it was like the friend and business partner of the person that did it. And, 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 and then it, it counts on that person to objectively assess a claim against a friend. That's not tenable. That cannot work. Clearly, what we need is an independent body that can handle accusations like that. We need a, a, a tag that we can put at the end of the show that says, you know, if you've experienced sexual harassment or sexual assault by anyone affiliated with our podcast, you can call this number, you can email this email, whatever. We need to empower that group to investigate. We need to indemnify that group against publishing accusations of wrongdoing. And what's more, that group needs to operate with all reasonable transparency, and it needs to be funded in such a way that it's not financially dependent on the success of the people it's investigating. And we're not the only ones that need this. Our community is made up of scores of podcasts and, and, and YouTube channels and TikToks and, and bloggers. The, the constituent parts range in size from international organizations with hundreds of staff and volunteers to one and two person operations that just had to incorporate to take on ad revenue. Right. All of them need the same kind of accountability and all of them want it. You know, at least the, the ones worth having. So we want to create an organization that can provide this service throughout the secular community. But we need more than that. We also need to educate people. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd never thought about it before I learned about these allegations, but I literally 
would have had no idea what to do if one of the accusers had come to me about it. I, I would have been there Googling what to do when your business partner is accused of sexual harassment. And let me tell you, most of the advice you find when you Google that is not coming from a person with the victim's best interest you know, at the top of their priority list. Now, now, we're in the very early stages of creating this organization. I say we, but the first thing that the group did once we brought them together was kick me out. And for good reason, right? Like if, if the goal is to regulate the industry I'm in, I shouldn't be exerting any influence on how it's put together. The people who are doing the work so far are a mix of sexual assault survivors, listeners, and concerned members of the community. And and if you'd like to get involved, incidentally, be sure to check out the Scathing Atheist Facebook page. Tim will be posting updates over the next few days, directing people on the best ways to help. Everything's still a bit chaotic, so apologies if we don't have clear directions right away. But even just having a list of volunteers for when the organization is ready for them is going to be really useful long term. And even though I'm not directly involved with the formation of the organization, I'm still in constant contact with the people that are. Puzzle and a Thunderstorm has pledged $10,000 to help get this thing started. And, and we've already secured several other meaningful sources of funding. We, we've been in contact with a number of the major organizations in the community, and the responses have been universally receptive to the idea. Real and meaningful movement is underway. And that was true even before they kicked me out. Right now, now, we don't exactly know what's going to come from these efforts. At minimum, we're going to get an independent reporting system, but everyone involved has far more exciting long-term goals. We ultimately want a victims fund that provides legal resources to people who fear retribution for public accusations. We want, we want to create a restorative component that can help victims heal. We want to create a model of how a community comes together to protect itself, but whatever we create, we'll do it knowing that it came too late. And that's the biggest takeaway. Di diversity isn't a goal because it, it makes atheism's college brochure look better. It isn't a goal just because it, it makes it you know, more inviting for members of underrepresented minorities. It's a goal because it affects the way we think. It affects the decisions we make and the ones that we don't make. When people complain about this being an overwhelmingly male community, it's not just because they're keeping some fucking gender scorecard. It's because, let's face it, if this community had more equal representation, this would have been a thing years ago. We fucked up. We left vulnerable people in our community undefended. We failed them. And it's not enough to just do better. We need to be better. And, and that leads, of course, to the awkward question uh, of what to do with the rest of the show, right? Because it's really hard to transition right from this to the poop jokes that we would normally be doing right now. There was a lot of talk about releasing just this diatribe in lieu of an episode or something like that this week. But ultimately, we decided the best thing that we could do was to soldier on. For a lot of this community... This show is an important way that they unplug and escape and far be it from us to deprive them of that right now of all time. So without further ado, I, I will tag in Lucinda. Warning, just, just fuck. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Allbirds, Honey, HelloFresh, and by... The unrelenting desire to keep moving forward even when it seems like we aren't getting anywhere. And now, The Scathing Atheist. It's February 9th. And it's Jewish Disabilities Awareness, Acceptance, and Inclusion Month. Huh. Okay. Not sure being Jewish is a disability. That's weird phrasing, Eli. But we're proud of you anyway, I guess. <laughs> I'm no <laughs> illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Samuel Alito's mom's New Jersey, Ann Arbor, <laughs> Michigan, and Waycross, Georgia, this is The Scathing Atheist. Of this week's episode, Breakfast Sullies Its Good Name with National Prayer. We learn about a fake treatment for autism that's dumber than ass bleach, which already existed. Yeah. And we'll explore yet another of the abundance of dark recesses in David Icke's brain. But first, a word from this week's first sponsor, Auburn's. Come along, cyber children. Come along. 
cyber teacher? Uh, yes, Elon Musk, the 15th. Question? You know how it's the future and we all make our houses out of plastic? Of course, of course. Well, well, how come so many people made their shoes out of plastic back then? Did they not know how to make shoes out of natural materials? Yeah. On the contrary, they could all have been wearing the wool runners from Allbirds. What were the wool runners from Allbirds? Great question. The wool runners were built using premium natural materials with a low environmental impact. You could get next level comfort with ZQ certified superfine merino wool that was temperature regulating, moisture wicking, and itch free. Plus, they had sugarcane based sweet foam midsoles, which contour to your feet and put a little bounce in your step. Wow, that sounds great. Why didn't everybody just buy those? Who knows, Cy Beyonce? Who knows? This year, take a big step forward for Mother Nature with Allbirds Wool Runner. Discover your perfect pair at allbirds.com today. That's A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S dot com. All right, kids, who's ready to catch a muta fish for lunch? They can see the future. They can. Yeah, they can. Yes. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the Yabba and Dabba to my do Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick fellas. Are you ready to get stoned? Right, it's a living. And it is. Yeah, I got giant ribs. They're knocking over my shitty Subaru that's on fire. It's good. It all makes sense. <laughs> nice. In our lead story tonight, the new and improved national prayer breakfast, now with fewer Russian spies, took place last Sunday. President Biden addressed the explicitly religious semi-official gathering that could not possibly exist without violating the concept of church-state separation and casting non-Christians as lesser citizens with a message of unity. Oh, good. He urged congressional <laughs> attendees to... Unified despite their religious differences, arguing that their shared goals for American excellence could inspire them to work together regardless of whether they were Christian or slightly different Christian or ever so slightly different <laughs> Christian or Ilan Omar. Hey, everybody. Our new and inclusive theocracy breakfast has a 100% non-GMO secular pancakes now. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Cool. Uh -huh. Oh, and uh, Ilan is here. Hi, Ilan. We're friends. We're the, right? Say that we're friends. <laughs> wave, wave if you mean we're friends. Sorry you got removed from your committee as a symbolic gesture against Muslims. Did you get my snack basket? It has moose munch. It has moose munch in there. Get, get in there. Get, get some of Joe's moose munch I sent you. You're going to like it. So, now, now, so <laughs> this is actually the first national prayer breakfast since the big schism that took place when it came to light that the existing event was literally just a venue for foreign influence operated by the secretive evangelical power brokers known as the family. If you're not familiar, they're an insanely well-funded Christian group officially called the International Foundation. Yikes. Yeah, right, because I guess generic organization name was taken, and it's literally <laughs> impossible to say any true thing about that group without sounding like a conspiracy theorist. Sure is. The title is insane. Like, the supervillain colonizing syndicate from Black Adam was like, guys, you got to tone that down. That's <laughs> <laughs> Right, yes. Maybe, I don't know, maybe something like Intergang. That's hard. Don't do exactly that. But like Intergang, just, you know, yeah. relax it down. Closer. And what's worse, we could learn tomorrow that these executives share a baby before every board meeting and your conspiracy theory uncle would still be like, but why did Hillary Tripp go into a car once? Yes. Open right. your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so, so they're the ones that conceived of the National Prayer Breakfast and they've run it since its inception 70 years ago. But it came to light in 2018 that Russian spies were attending these things, including... Maria Butina, who, who was convicted of spying in 2018 and served 15 months in prison. According to CNN, at least 60 Russians had made plans to attend the 2018 breakfast before wow. the news about Butina broke and scuttled the whole thing. Yeah, terrifying. The 2017 breakfast, it was just like hundreds of people sitting at the same table, but facing away like they were on benches in a park, doing <laughs> dead, <laughs> yeah, sliding right, right. briefcases and walking away. And somebody gets on the mic, they're like, hey, everyone, two quick things. Uh, one, everyone make sure you open that email from Giuliani just now. Click on the Britney Spears attachment is what he told me, right? <laughs> uh, the guy, a trench coat guy told me that. Oh, and two, we refilled the bacon. So good. Enjoy that. Oh, all right. And God is love. God is love. And, uh, yeah, uh, right. And prayer, and prayer. Anyway, so upon learning that the constitutionally dubious practice that grew out of Cold War hysteria had become hopelessly corrupted, Congress decided to solve the problem by continuing to do it just less constitutionally. A new organization was created called the National Prayer Breakfast Foundation that'll set up the same basic event, but with more congressional control. 
right? So instead of simply giving the appearance of government endorsement, they just they just gave it actual government endorsement. Okay, well, if they're just going to do the things we accuse them of, I want to see Pat Robertson's cheek stilts. Like, I want to see, I want to see that. Do they go from the ground? Do they go from his shoulder? Like a tent that's falling apart. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. I want to know. <laughs> Questions. An RV that's parked for this uh, for the day. Yeah, exactly. And and as if this isn't bad enough, by the way, I should point out that the old National Prayer Breakfast is still going on. Really? It's just been given the new like conspiracy theorist who is too tired to put their all into it name the gathering literally guys titles Yikes. <laughs> just spend a little bit more time well look it's even still happening in essentially full coordination with this new other breakfast they took place at the same time on the same day the the old unofficial prayer breakfast even paused to pipe in a live stream of biden's remarks so literally the same <laughs> evil thing still happens but now it happens twice as much and gives some politicians but not others one degree of plausible <laughs> deniability in terms of corrupt foreign influence guys we're the breakfast front of judea we're the real <laughs> one that the other thing is different well, and what's so funny is that the inevitable solution to this is going to be a third secular breakfast where <laughs> fucking Jeff Blackwell and the two nerds we have in Congress book a table at IHOP. And like, <laughs> it's actually just the three. I know we booked for six. So no. <laughs> it's just three. Next up in headlines, Representative Ilan Omar. We already talked about her a little bit. She was removed from the Foreign Affairs Committee last week. By Speaker, just fucking barely, Kevin McCarthy <laughs> and House Republicans. And the new members of the group are, of course, Christian right lunatics like Marjorie Taylor Greene. The GOP leadership claims that Omar was replaced because she made offensive remarks several years ago that contained anti-Semitic tropes. Hip, hip, hip. Omar, Omar immediately <laughs> apologized and acknowledged the problem. And otherwise, she's been a great leader. She also happens to be one of the first two Muslim women to ever serve in U.S. Congress. Yeah. And of course, that is why she was actually removed. The being a great leader and the being a Muslim woman and an immigrant. So that's the first part of the story, I guess. Republicans are liars is yeah. the top line. Racist liars who lie about being racist might as well be Republicanism's post colonic at this point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's the next part, which was fantastic. In response to the move by McCarthy, the hero that we do not deserve, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, pointed out the absurd situation of this whole thing on the House floor. I'm going to paraphrase here, but she basically said, oh, okay, so we're playing with no anti-Semitic remarks in the past. Those are the rules. <laughs> so when Marjorie Taylor Greene said that Wildfires in California were being caused by space lasers controlled by Diane Feinstein's husband and the Rothschild family of Illuminati globalist bankers in order to steal money from Donald Trump's border wall and pay for high speed rail that would help destroy our delightful big oil sector and cement more power for the Jewish laser cabal. Uh, so when when MTG said that, you, you guys are saying it was. Uh, pro Semitic, just to be clear about all the rules and everything we're, we're all saying. I'm saying they're good at building lasers. It's a compliment. Yeah, that's all real. I didn't. I didn't exaggerate the claim. That's what MTG said. That is what she said. Yes. And just you know, exact words from AOC for clarity. She said, "Don't tell me that this is about a condemnation of anti-Semitic remarks when you have a member of the Republican Caucus, Green, who has talked about Jewish space lasers." and elevated her to some of the highest committee assignments in this body. This is about targeting women of color in the United States of America. End actual quote. Yeah, I will, uh, targeting women of color in the United States of America would be another great post-colonic, actually, if they're shopping yeah. that. So MTG is an idiot and decided to wade into a battle of intellect and words with AOC. Just a terrible idea, but entertaining for us, I guess. And MTG literally started this whole thing by saying, debate me like a crazy person, <laughs> like Steven Crowder in a meme. <clears throat> Seriously. Here's the tweet from Madge Taj Gadge. Quote, I have repeatedly asked you to debate me, but you've been a coward and can't even <laughs> respond. When are you going to be an adult and actually debate me on policy instead of run your mouth like a teenage girl? And while we're at it, 
Mike Tyson, fucking box me, you coward. <laughs> yeah, right. See my weird swingy pull up. Let's fucking do it. <laughs> so, okay. First of all, when this happened, the entire internet loved the idea of watching AOC absolutely destroy Marjorie Taylor Greene in a debate. People seriously were like contacting ESPN and like looping in the <laughs> WWE, setting up pay-per-view contracts, trying really hard to make that happen. But AOC's follow-up was even better. She responded, hey there, in case you forgot, we sit on the same committee, yes. which literally debated this week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you if you forgot. You spent almost no time there. In the few minutes you did show up, you claimed that one elementary school got $5 billion to teach critical race theory. And yes, Fucking MTG what? did say that. Oh my, my God. I, AOC, AOC, big, I, know you, I know you're a listener, big fan. I don't have a million dollars. But I will find a million dollars and I will give it to you if you agree to do this debate. But then you just go all John Cleese from the argument clinic sketch, <laughs> right? The whole time. No, it isn't. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> so, <good. laughs> so I think the big takeaway here is that Eli and Anna need to find that elementary school and get that kid enrolled. Right? Five billion dollars yeah. of funding, just a whole bunch of critical race <laughs> He'll theory. He'll be so critical oh, of race. Yeah. Sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. I wondered why all the black kids in Max's preschool had their own spaceship and now it's all coming together. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was like a carpool thing. Right. Yeah, right. I get it. And on that note, we're going to pause for a quick word from our second sponsor this week, Honey. Kid can learn about racist babies for real. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> Dude, stop. Heath, I'm telling you, man, just let hey, me... Guys, guys, what's, what's all the hubbub here? Okay, yeah. Eli wants to go to Vegas and gamble all our money. What? I'm telling you, I cannot lose. Tell him about my miracle, Heath. Tell him. Uh, all right. So Eli downloaded Honey, and now he thinks he's like magically lucky or something. Wait, what's Honey? Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. And it found me a coupon every single time I tried it today. I'm telling you, I'm on a hot streak. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. A free shopping tool that applies coupons to my cart? How does that work? All right, well, imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. And it really works. I've used Honey to save money on electronics, shopping. It even saved me 23 bucks on food delivery this week. Plus, Honey doesn't just work on desktops. It works on your iPhone, too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash scathing. That's joinhoney.com slash scathing. Now, if you'll excuse me, guys, every second I stand here arguing with you, I could be at the crap table. It, it's it's craps, Eli. It's a dice game called craps. You know that, right? Oh, that does change my strategy significantly. Oh, I bet it does. Still bet on red. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Next up in headlines. The Satanic Temple is continuing in their quest to support bodily autonomy and also in making it so fucking clear that religious exemptions from laws are stupid mm -hmm. because God is fake, that's nothing, and people are real, that's everything. The Temple just announced that they're going to be launching a virtual abortion clinic where patients can conduct telehealth visits and receive, quote, Free religious medication abortion care. And that might sound like weird phrasing, but it has the word religious. So mm -hmm. shitty red states can't enforce laws about it because they said the magic word in their thing. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Heath. I was smoking some religious sacrament and I didn't catch that. What was that? What was <laughs> I get it. Now I picture you smoking pot out of that swingy thing they use in mass. <laughs> <laughs> Swinging it around your head. <laughs> so most importantly, the clinic is going to provide extremely important medical care. Great stuff. And it gets even better when you hear a bit more of the exact wording and the branding that they chose for the announcement. Of course, they explain how their magical demon-based 
Abortion ritual is part of their sincerely held belief system. No backsies. I said religious. You can't do anything. And then they gave us the title. Here's a quote from their announcement. The Samuel Alito's mom's satanic abortion clinic (laughs) provides religious medication abortion care. And that, in this little announcement on their site, is followed by a cartoon of Alito's mom standing outside the clinic. And she's saying, if only abortion was legal when I was pregnant. (laughs) Well, no, that's that's infomercial advertising 101. You start on some universal thought that everybody's had before. I wish Sam Alito's (laughs) mom could have got an abortion. That makes sense. I get it. Good marketing. Yeah. So good stuff. Nice branding, guys. And uh, just one more quick reminder about this. More for Eli. Eli and Anna, more than anybody else. Eli and Anna live minutes away from Samuel Alito. And I'm sure Eli knows to be very respectful at the supermarket. And he'll let us know about all those very respectful interactions they may or may not have with mild disputes. I have so many bread costumes, he'll never see me coming. You do have a lot of bread costumes. (laughs) I do. And in pushed out of the LGBTQ news, (laughs) the bad guys are losing. Feels hard to say that sometimes, but it's true. Because despite all their bluster and muster, the desperate attempts of theocrats to make their Theo, the eponymous Krat, they have failed. And thanks to a recent report from the Human Rights Campaign, we know just how hard they failed because less than 10% of anti-LGBTQ bills proposed in 2022 actually passed. Yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm glad they're rolling badly on that D10 or whatever, but uh, maybe we stop offering roll for bigot stuff at all, just regardless of which D it is. <laughs> yeah. And to be clear, we do that by voting. Everyone, every good person votes every time. We have the numbers to win just about every time, at least on the national level. No more bigotry checks. We're not doing bigotry checks. <laughs> yeah, I like it. And look, nobody could blame you for thinking, hey, man, Even one anti-LGBTQ law passing is a bad thing, especially if you're not from America and you don't know that our government is one half slave owner participation trophy and the other half internet comment section. And and those are just the federal branches, people. But (laughs) proposing a bill and it becoming law are two vastly different things. I I can't be the only one that was hoping that was the lead in to Eli's rendition of Schoolhouse Rock's I'm Just a Bill, right? (laughs) <laughs> but no, it, was just, it was just the fucking point he was making. I'm, I am disappointed too. Couldn't get the rights. Couldn't get oh, the okay. rights. <laughs> so of the 315 discriminatory anti-LGBTQ plus bills proposed in 2022, 149 bills targeted the transgender and non-binary community, with the majority targeting children. 80 bills aimed to prevent transgender youth from playing school sports, and 42 bills were written to prevent transgender and non-binary youth from receiving, and I'm quoting the report here, life-saving, medically necessary, gender-affirming health care. Now, again, only 29 of those bills passed. But as the report says, that is still far more than has been passed in recent memory. So this fight is far from over. Well, yeah, to, I mean, to echo Heath's point, like, if you just frame this story as 29 bills targeting transgender children passed, like this is a, this yeah. is a terrifying fucking story. Terrifying. Mm-hmm. And that's the story. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, okay, I'm going to try to find the positives here. It's tough. I don't know. It's good that they lost on some of those. But yes, 29 bills. Horrible. I guess, okay, one little good sign is that even some Republicans are finally jumping off the bigot train a little bit. Mm-hmm. And other Republicans are dying. Mm-hmm. So that, that's good. I guess what I'm saying is more of that, right? I mean, not fast <laughs> enough, but it's, it's something. They are. More of that. They're dying. And again, I, I want to leave you on a bright spot as well. So the HRC report also points out that 24 equality bills were passed last year, protecting name change rights, voting rights, and bathroom freedom for trans people. And yes, many of those are long overdue, but that number is growing both at the state and national level. So while we absolutely have to keep fighting, we should never forget that part of the reason for that is because we're going to win. Amen. And finally tonight, in Pudo Science News, <laughs> Canadian naturopath Jason Klopp is a liar. Sorry, okay, no, let me start <laughs> over. Naturopathy is nothing. It's mm-hmm. nonsense. It's people who try to heal things with like all natural ingredients or self-healing or Other ridiculous things like homeopathy, that's part of it. Theoretically, okay, yes, a naturopath could provide real medicine sometimes. But 
the extent to which they're a naturopath is the exact extent to which they're not a real doctor. So right. one of those guys made some news recently. Jason Klopp has been fighting with oversight boards in British Columbia for the right to provide fecal microbiota supplements as a treatment for autism. Right. Which is exactly why you don't want your doctor trained in not medicine. Right. You don't want him trained in anything. Not medicine. You don't want to train to knitting either, right? Anything that isn't real medicine that a doctor does needs to be their hobby. That'd be great. No part of the doctoring. Just hobby. Yeah. So most of the story is actually from last year, but somehow we never covered this thing. I don't know how. We never covered the insane liar who's trying to sell the idea of literally eating other people's shit. And that is unacceptable. <laughs> We're covering it today. Here we are. Let's start with the treatment called fecal microbiota transplantation, or FMT. It is literally eating other people's shit, but it's also a real medical thing, just not for autism. It's pretty much only used for treating certain rare cases of a condition called C. diff, which is something that happens in your colon. But there's no colon-based autism because that's insane. So FMT is definitely not approved for autism treatment. Nonetheless, Jason Klopp was selling pills of processed fecal matter and claiming they remove your lo location on a spectrum from your ass where that concept lives somehow. And he was charging parents of autistic children about 15,000 US dollars for one round of FMT. <sighs> yeah, which we should point out is way above market rate for paying someone to shit in your mouth. Okay, I'm not, way not, above. Not going to ask why you know that. I mean, why do you think I own all those bread costumes? No illusions. I don't. It's not more clear now. What? No. Nope. Moving right along. Moving right along. So the authorities in Canada decided to shut him down last year. It started with an investigation by the College of Naturopathic Physicians. That's the governing body that provides oversight so that they don't have any irresponsible business practices among moon clerics and quantum druids and northern paladins. So... That's the voice of reason here, just to be clear. If a governing body that has a magical fraud occupation right in the title decides that you are being unscientific, that's ridiculous. That's terrifying. You're probably selling literal shit to people for them to eat. Yep. For something that doesn't help. Yeah. Well, Klopp decided to sue and tried to get a judge to order the College of Naturopathic Physicians to stop being such sticklers about things that are like, you know, real. And Here's the argument from Klopp's attorney. He started by claiming that you can't really break a rule in the field of magic because what would that even mean? Which, okay, I, that's a solid argument. No, it is. Yeah, the actually. way he seems to think exactly. <laughs> he said, quote, what does it take for a naturopath to do something unbecoming in a field that is so broad and open to interpretation? Yeah, it's Oh, really? I'm faking it? The legal argument. <laughs> well, yeah, yep. right. No, it's it's the, the argument here seems to be it would literally be impossible to do this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so we should keep doing it. Yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. From there, Klopp's lawyer explained how naturopathic theory isn't really big on uh, numbersy stuff historically. <laughs> and instead, <laughs> it's more about anecdotes. He actually said that. He actually said he's like, no, this is an anecdote thing. So we're not playing with numbers. We don't do numbers. And he even uses homeopathy as a defense of naturopathy. He argued that naturopathy includes homeopathy, which is based on, quote, magical thinking and is certainly non-scientific at its core. In certain respects, naturopaths may rely on science, but they are not bound by science. And, quote, that's the argument for naturopathy, to be clear. They're not bound by... If it if I'm the fucking judge, I'm going to ask the naturopath in the court to fucking fly. I'll be like, oh, no, he says you're not bound by science. Fucking fucking float around or some goddamn shit then. Just drop you off or something. I feel like that attorney client meeting probably wasn't a lot of fun. It's just like, okay, so um, we're looking this over. I plan to argue that everything you believe is fake, including this thing. I'm your lawyer, to be clear. I'm doing this for you. You're paying me to do this for you, actually. God. Yeah. Okay. So this one ends with a bit of good news. The investigation discovered that Klopp was producing FMT in a random basement apartment in British Columbia using shit 
from his nephews and putting it into gel caps. Wait, this is the good news? Hey, I'm, I'll get there. I'll get there. Okay. Plot, yeah, right. I was going to say, man. Yeah. Talk faster. You, see, you, can't pa- you can't pause after that sentence. Here. Sorry. No, <laughs> right, 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 right. so much just let me finish. You- <laughs> let me finish. We found that out. Klopp swore that the kids had really high quality shit because he knows their <laughs> lifestyles. Seriously, he said that as a defense. Peanut butter and jelly is yeah. great for you. But after about a year of trying to figure out a non-scientific argument against a fake medicine, I guess the College of Healing Wizards was somehow able to shut down Klopp's FMT business in December. So there's the good news, very, very end. There it is. Yeah, not, not for nothing, but if I discovered a person who I thought was a doctor was feeding my child gel caps of his nephew's shit, <laughs> I would be asking for him to lose a lot more than his business license. So yeah. there you have it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And with that disturbing reminder of just how full of shit these motherfuckers have to get before we'll shut them down, we're going to wrap up the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Pumanji. And when we come back, we'll sacrifice a few more IQ points to the ramblings of David Icke. Hey, podcast listener. If you've been listening to our ads for a while, you know about one of our favorite sponsors, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip trips to the grocery store and you can count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Which is why we here at The Scathing Atheist are pleased to announce our very own competitor brand, Hello Rotten, which steals ingredients from the HelloFresh warehouse, leaves them in the midday sun for days at a time, and then delivers them straight to you. HelloFresh now has 40 weekly recipes to choose from, so you can say bye-bye to your recipe rut and treat yourself and your family to exciting new flavors every week. But with Hello Rotten, you can say, oh, to a big sloppy box of a rotten food. No matter your lifestyle or meal preference, HelloFresh has recipes sure to please everyone at your table. From fit and wholesome to veggie or family friendly, you'll always find something even the pickiest eaters will enjoy. Hello Rotten will not do that. It's all just kind of in there in the box, you know. Indeed it is, Heath. Indeed it is. Hello Fresh sent us a box to try, and I loved how simple and flavorful the meals were while being a breeze to make. That's why I know Illusions personally endorse it as a product. So just go to HelloFresh.com slash scathing65 and use the code scathing65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash scathing65 and use the code scathing65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Hello Fresh. I think our idea might be bad. We have all these boxes now. I know. I know. What makes David Icke's everything you need to know but have never been told so weird isn't really that it has holographic satanic alien demon world controlling Jews from Saturn. It's that they come up so infrequently. Yeah. Right? I, I, I kind of feel like that has. Yeah. yeah, right. If that's your book, that has to be the focus of your fucking book <laughs> once you've introduced it. But we're about to talk about a 52 page chapter where that barely comes up. OK, <laughs> counterpoint spoken like a man who hasn't watched three years of Marvel TV shows about the Hulk's least favorite cousins. No, okay, so, no, actually. Okay. Yeah, right, right. There is precedent. OK, fair. So anyway. This week, Davy is going to make us defend war with a chapter titled War, 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 We Love It. Now, okay, so he starts out like this is a frustrating one, right? Because it starts off like my notes are like, okay, I'll reluctantly agree with you that we should spend more money on homeless people than we do on tanks. Or at at the very least, we should let them sleep in the tanks that we're not (laughs) using. We're not using them most of the time. The M1 Abrams double wide. I love it. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Okay, but to be fair, his point is kind of deflated by the implied, you know, stop spending more money on tanks than we do on homeless people. And get down to the real business of stopping the alien lizard. Right, right, (laughs) right. God. And now and look, there are very few things you can't fault Trump for, but. Putting people with ties to defense in charge of defense (laughs) is actually on that list, David. Okay. Jared Kushner wearing body armor on top of his like $5,000 suit like (laughs) Joe from Arrest Development (laughs) might be the silliest image from the entire Trump administration. Yeah. And that's a high bar. That includes Donald Trump 
putting his hands on the magical globe that he thought he was going to like do a spell with all those other yeah. leaders and smiling. Yeah. And that includes Mike Pence touching a piece of NASA equipment with his hand inches away from a sign that says, don't <laughs> fucking touch this. We are yes. NASA. Are you crazy? Yeah. And him staring right into the eclipse and all of that. But still, yeah. <laughs> that was a great one. <laughs> I forgot about that. But of course, war isn't just about making money, although that's a lot of it. It's also about harvesting anger souls for the reptilian gods of the Jews. Five sentences. Who had five yep. sentences in the pool? <laughs> yeah. Okay, just to be clear, the Jewish reptile demons were feasting on the magical energy mana of human anger. But they were still a little peckish, so they started wars. Right. There wasn't enough anger. Yes. That's the actual narrative of the book. I have so much trouble paying attention to any words that come after trilateral commission in any book. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. We need rules about those like triggers at the beginning. Like if you start a sentence with trilateral commission or honestly quantum anything and you're not a quantum physicist. Yeah. Or if you're like I have a podcast, so therefore, no, you're done dogging. You're done <laughs> right, dogging. Yeah. Therefore, nothing. Right, right. So, and then we he introduces us to the the project for a new American century, which is one of his baddies du jour, apparently. And he, in so doing, he keeps acting like when diplomats and high level advisors say a foreign policy thing will happen, and then it happens. That's a gotcha, right? Exactly, David. David, how would uncorrupt diplomats look in your view <laughs> right yeah now now to be fair a, a nefarious cabal of illuminati did start the war in iraq under false pretenses but like he was he was yeah. bound to get one right eventually you know right and the people of israel and palestine have been safe ever since thanks to the lizard aliens <laughs> right he might yeah. be onto something yeah oh god and then we get one of the most promising subheadings in the entire book the real reason for 9 11 right he says, you know, this reporter said that war in these various countries would take a Pearl Harbor level event and then Bush referred to 9-11 as the new Pearl Harbor. What are the odds that two entire people uh, would be aware of Pearl Harbor? <laughs> know that <laughs> that place. Yeah. And like the Illuminati guy in George W's office, he's like, yeah, OK, make a statement, but don't. Don't say Pearl Harbor. Dude, you said Pearl Harbor right away. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the claim is? Also, there's the point where he says, like, well, the media believed the same people about 9-11 that they believed about the WMDs in Iraq. And I'm like, that, that was before, though. <laughs> <laughs> you, David, you know about before, right? Because if you, you don't, do. that would explain he a lot. He does not <laughs> know about before. Yeah. How is he getting the Iraq war wrong? Just name evil shit about a war, David. That's what happens in the Iraq war. <laughs> right, yes, and exactly. You Thank you. Miss. Right, and that's why they should have known that JFK was in danger. Nope, okay, I did time backwards. I don't, how does before work? <laughs> so, and then we get, this is to me, one of the weirdest of the 9-11 truth or arguments. He presents the whole, like, be pretty hard to crash a plane into a building, though. <laughs> would it <laughs> I have played the documentary Grand Theft Auto 4 everybody on those planes should have just woken up at the nearest hospital $500 more <laughs> so, one of my favorite arguments he's talking about the 9-11 hijackers and he goes well, the, the so called lead hijackers favorite food was pork what right as if like as in like he's not really Muslim but like but like how is your favorite food just pork Pork in general. <laughs> That's a category. What would that even mean? One pork, please. <laughs> uh, write that down. I'm leaving a breadcrumb trail. I sure do love me the pork. <laughs> For 19-year-old Eli Bosnick to actively believe. <laughs> oh, he gets he gives us the they did Vietnam so they'd have coffins to send their heroin back in. That was new to me. I hadn't, hadn't heard that one before. Yeah, it feels like there has to be a better way than that to transport heroin, no? <laughs> right, yes. Guys, this is a sad funeral. Did you know Johnny knew Frank Lucas? Because he's here. I guess it's <laughs> nice of him to come to the funeral and open the coffin. What's happening? <laughs> is it an actual quote from the fucking book? He says, okay, time to welcome back George Soros. He's been away too long. <laughs> That's actually how he puts it. Real thing, real quote. I feel like David Icke, 
types the letter G anywhere, like during a text, and George Soros pops up. <laughs> and that's just where the conversation goes. He's just like, yeah, okay, well, we might as well talk about Soros, too. Just Yeah, right. Now that we're... Nothing. Honestly, <laughs> this whole book feels like David Icke started a text and just kept hitting the first autocomplete word for 1,200 pages. The book. Yeah, right, right. He's like, you ever notice how all the modern revolutions are named after colors? Red, orange, green, rose, <laughs> tulip, lotus. <laughs> Those are his exact examples. Those are the ones he really uses. The color lotus? Yeah. <laughs> French. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Industrial. Ranch. No, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Oh, okay. he he breaks down the, the like the to do list if you want to start your own CIA funded revolution at home. And I, I got ready to write a bunch of jokes, and I'm like, oh no, actually, I I guess those probably are the four steps the CIA uses to overthrow a foreign government. I guess that's good. <laughs> just a council of lizard demons watching the CIA run all their coups and being like, fuck, that's way easier than our thing. Like we have the, <laughs> we have we have this whole like anger oscillation harvesting center like. The major- <laughs> Maybe we just outsource it to the CIA from now on. Yes. It, I think that they're Jewish, right? The CIA is right? Awesome. Is the name of all Jewish people? Also, and he, he tacks on at the very end here of this subchapter. He's like, also, the Illuminati is letting brown people move to the UK. African brown people. In no, Northern Africa, but still. <laughs> okay. I know this is a weird compliment to give David Icke, but I like that he occasionally takes a break from international bullshit to focus on the local. Right, like, yeah. Lizard Jews <laughs> started the Iraq war for anger souls. Also, what the fuck happened to Cadbury cream eggs? They changed them. <laughs> you all know it. They fucking changed them. Who's drinking tonight? So, okay, and then we get a subchapter called In Their Own Words, and I'm thinking, anybody's but yours, bro. This is where we learn that the CIA made ISIS. Right. I mean, perfect crime, right? Solid yeah. cover. I get it. Like, for example, if Hitler had built a Jewish army, we'd all be like, what? No, I don't know <laughs> what to think about this guy. And we're off the trail. All of a sudden, yeah. we're off the trail. Yep. Yep. He goes, he's like, if there's not like one group running at all, why did Obama have the exact same wars as George W? <laughs> okay. This is the dumbest argument in the <laughs> book, maybe. <laughs> You know, I, I honestly, I went through this as well because when they told me I had to live in the exact same house as the guy in Jersey I bought it from, I was like, ew. <laughs> it's weird how Abe Lincoln was in the exact same war as Jefferson Davis. <laughs> Think about it. They're both the same. He tells us that the Jews are the ones that are really be- beheading people on video in the name of Allah. That's, well, excuse us for cultural exchange, David Ike. We thought maybe we could unite on some activity. Oh, yeah. Okay, those videos are like the foie gras of anger oscillation food, though. Like Clearly, that's like, sure, yeah. Just rich. Oh, God. I, also, I love when his nationalism gets in the way of his anti-governmentness, right? He's, it will just suddenly go, but actually the UK government is the most conspiratorial of all of the governments. <laughs> right. Wine gums used to be harder. Who's with me, huh? <laughs> and delay, delay, delay. <laughs> and, and by the way, in case he hasn't made it clear which ethnic minority is to blame for this whole armed conflict thing, the next subchapter is actually titled Israel, War, and Terror. Jewish. And, and I'm, I'm reading the bit about how Syria wasn't hurting anybody. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, this aged poorly. But then I reminded myself that this was published in 2017. <laughs> right. So it's just it just was poorly. Hop, you got time going the other way, buddy. You did it yeah. again. You just gotta, you gotta switch back to the regular. And, and then, of course, there is that like, well, the Palestinians were a little close to the fence moment, you know. Oh my God! He seriously makes that argument. He does. If mm-hmm. I'm t- if he starts telling us in what ways we'll love a movie, I get to sue him. Right? That's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> he's start, he's 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 literally shitting on the practice at one point of dropping leaflets before you bomb cities and making it sound like that's colluding with the enemy. <laughs> the, the description's insane. He's like, yeah. So you know when uh, someone doesn't quite tickle you, but they like pump fake it. And it's even worse. It's Z- that's Zionism. That's what that is. <laughs> that's what the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is like. Oh, and I love this this fucking email 
that he cites. This is insane. It is fucking. Th- yeah. It's so good. In the Russian Spanner subchapter, he's like, it's like, hey, Phil, want to do a false flag chemical weapon attack in Syria? <laughs> yes, no, maybe. Check a box. Yep. <laughs> At Shadow Gov Phil. <laughs> You want to drop nerve gas on Syria and finally start a conflict in the Middle East, like for the first time? Like this for yes, reply for no. (laughs) Seriously, he shows this email. It's nuts. David Icke has the email typed out that he allegedly has. It was like hacked or something. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be one Illuminati guy talking to another being like, Hello, fellow Zionist operative that we both are. (laughs) We can make several giant bags of cartoon money if we drop a chemical weapon on Syria. Might be risky, but again, so much evil cartoon money bags, we're evil. (laughs) And okay, literal exact quote. Kind regards. Yes. Dave. Yes. At the end of the. <laughs> that can't. You can't. That's not real. It can, you can't say that and then say kind regards. Nope. I'm doing that for all my crimes from now on. Yep. Every time <laughs> you want me to bring weed to the party, kind regards, Eli. Yep. There you go. To whom do the fake chemical weapons <laughs> make concern? Best. Dave. So, okay. And then he tells us about the group that faked the chemical weapon attack in Syria, the white helmets, except for he uses. But he spells it like double hockey sticks out. Very clever. He says, if you look closely at the videos of the sarin attacks, you can see fake corpses and actors opening their eyes or or dying people that aren't all the way dead yet. It's one of those two things that you're seeing. Yeah. Here's another cool thing. If you watch it while you listen to Dark Side of the Moon, it actually lines up. It's really cool. Right. In this passage, David's like, look. Either I'm encouraging my horde of mentally ill followers to sully some of the most tragic war footage of the last 50 years with their unhinged thinking, or I caught a blooper. It's one of those. That's what I'm saying is that it's one of those. Oh, it's so, it's so awful. He's like, you know, one little girl that they pulled out of the rubble didn't look very dirty to me. Like, Jesus, Jesus Christ, dude. Seriously, he said that. The only yeah. reason that girl doesn't have a mob outside her house every day is that David Icke doesn't have as many Twitter followers as Alex Jones. That's the only difference. Thank you. Thank you. And then he's just like, apropos of nothing, YouTube's terms of service are bullshit. <laughs> Did I mention Cadbury eggs earlier? Also that. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. And then it's time to talk about what a fuck up Trump is, right? I'm so sick of agreeing with him. <laughs> but like right away, he starts fucking it up, right? Because he's like trying to let like list all of the high ranking military officials that Trump put into, you know, high government positions. But he runs out super quick. And by like the third one on the list, he's listing the director of the Federal Bureau of Prisons. <laughs> All right, everyone, here at the Illuminati today, we're doling out top political positions to members of our secret (laughs) cabal. Let me say before we start, Steve, you drew the short stick on this one, okay, man? (laughs) What? And I don't want you making a big deal when I announce it. Just fucking sit there and get your position. Come on. (laughs) Let me get a good parking spot. And he's like, you ever notice how no matter who the president is, Kim Jong-un is still the bad guy? That's proof that Democrats and Republicans are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Abe Lincoln and Barack Obama, same stance on slavery. Both (laughs) parties. That's a Republican and a Democrat. Right. God. And he's like, apropos of nothing, Facebook's terms of service are bullshit. (laughs) I feel like we're watching him get suspended from these services in real time. Right. right? Yeah. As he's reading the book, he's like clicking back and forth from the book to Facebook. (laughs) It's like he thinks his keyboard is a typewriter and he also can't afford like another ream of paper. Like he's got exactly the number of papers he's going to need. And and that's how the demons control the geopolitical. Fuck. I got zucked. I got zucked for a squash that looks like a dick. God, give me a <laughs> I shouldn't type this. I'm wasting paper. And then there's this great line. I love this one because finally we got to one that did age poorly. He's like, and Putin was accused of planning to invade countries on his western border with no evidence at all. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie Madoff is amazing at picking a stock. I will say that about this guy. No one will ever. Say anything bad. You know who can pick out a curveball? The Houston Astros. They are amazing. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. They're just really good hitters. <laughs> he tells us that Kim Jong-un is a U.S. puppet, which I wouldn't have guessed. Yeah, obviously. How else would we get him to do bad things over multiple presidencies? Well, right. Noah? Yeah, no, it's got to be consistent. <laughs> Pay attention. 
And then we wrap up with a subchapter where the subtitle does away with a pretense and it just says World War III. And I love this so much, right? Because he's, he's giving us his final thoughts and he opens up by saying, in his 1959 book, Satan, Prince of the World. <laughs> and I'm like, Yikes. yeah, man, I am in. <laughs> <laughs> in the 1732 textbook, there's demons in my blood. Yeah, right, right. No, yeah, man, truth lies where the Cold War propagandists met the satanic panic i'm sure and so but in the book some dude claimed that there was an old letter that predicted three world wars two of which had already happened the third of which never did so this guy's been wrong for 64 years and counting but if you if you don't understand before i i don't know yeah also the old letter that he's talking about is from 1871 mm -hmm. and the guy who wrote it literally helped start the kkk and according to David Icke, is also a Zionist operative. Yes. Who helped start the KKK. Yep. Mm -hmm. Baffling. Uh, also, by the way, and I was surprised by this. Apparently, according to this letter, the nihilists and atheists team up on the same side in World War III. We're one of the sides, us huh. and yeah. nihilists. Just a sea of bald guys with goatees charging down a hill, <laughs> led by Aaron Ra in full cosplay. <laughs> it must be exhausting. <laughs> Nihilist army, yeah. There's not a lot going on there. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, Satan is going to show up. He will beat both Christianity and atheism, which makes sense to me, right? Yeah. I mean, the minute Satan shows up, he's beaten us. So right, credit exactly. there. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. But I also feel like we're all smart enough to sort of scooch over to the Christians. Right? <laughs> if I see Satan, I'm a fucking Christian. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> also, I feel like Satan, by the same token, Satan kind of has to be a Christian, right? Like, yeah. he's met Jesus's dad, who is in fact God. Yep, he's, he sure has. He's got to be a Christian, just like begrudgingly. Uh, and because he's just never fucking done, there's also a postscript. I would have just left it out, but this is the first mention that we actually get of the yellow fringe on the flags in federal yeah. courts, the ad morality shit. <laughs> Little gift at the end there. Yeah, right, right. Just when you're like, I just, I can't even stand another chapter. He's like, yellow fringe on the flags. Yeah. And you're like, all right, buddy. All okay. right. David Icke does a bad job of the yellow fringe on the flags argument, though, which is a terror. Like, it's already ridiculous. And I don't think he fully understands. He says the yellow fringe indicates that U.S. troops are fighting for the United States corporation. Yes. Not the country. But the ancient law of fringing regulations, I guess, forced, <laughs> forced us to have a big hint about the world controlling aliens who haven't figured out a way to relax that regulation right, yes. about the fringing <laughs> during their control of the world. Well, yeah, no, we don't want to violate statute 372 of the flag. Right, yeah. <laughs> I'm a world controlling demon, but yeah. Yes. I, 372, you don't violate 372. We have a line and it's a flag code. Yeah. And I'm proud yeah. to be a giant scary <laughs> demon. <laughs> right. So David Icke makes that final thing. This is the very end of the chapter, by the way. That was his big, like, closer. Mm -hmm. yep. Except then he's like, also check out my YouTube. I have a bit. Wait, hold on. When I get it back up again, check out my YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Terms of service are bullshit. End of chapter. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. If there's one thing we know for sure about David Icke, it's that he never runs out of bullshit. So we're going to be back with more of this on next month's installment of Everything You Need to Know. Before we pull the blankets back up this week, I want to thank everybody who's reached out in support of our community over the last week. It's been a hard week for a lot of people, and your support has made a real difference. Anyway, that's all the blasphemy we've got for you tonight, but we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptocrat, debuting at 7 Eastern on Monday, and an even newer episode of our sister show's Hot Friend God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 Eastern on Tuesday, and an even newer episode of our half sister show, Citation Needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, I can't clock out until I've thanked Heath Enright for finishing his side work, Eli Bosnick for doing his roll ups, and Lucy and delusions for knocking them over. I also want to thank all the volunteers working so hard on our new accountability project, and I want to remind you to check out the Scathing Atheist Facebook page to learn more about how you can help. No Farnsworth quote, because I, I didn't want to put anybody's voice after that opening without their permission. Uh, and uh, I do uh, sincerely appreciate all our new Patreon donors. I hope you don't mind if I wait until next week to thank you by name. Tim Robertson handles our social media. Our audio engineer is Morgan Clark. We also do the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com.
preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.